Yo, what is good, Jets Nation? Welcome back to Jets Media. This is Richie, and in this video, we will be breaking down the New York Jets 2023 defensive line. Now, this is a brand new series here on Jets Media where we break down each position group on the New York Jets heading into training camp. If you guys have been familiar with Jets Media for these past couple of seasons, this has been a series that we do on the channel every single year around this time, and I'm really excited to break it all down. So we're going to do the edge rushers, and then we're going to get into the interior defensive line. And I think that this defensive line possibly is the best position group on the entire team. And you can argue the most important position on the team outside of quarterback, obviously. But I'm really excited to break down the New York Jets 2023 defensive line because they are deep, they are scary, and they got a lot of upside in year number three with Robert Sala as our head coach. Let's freaking go. So if you guys are enjoying these content here on Jets Media, me breaking down each position group, do your boy a solid favor by simply hitting that thumbs up button and commenting down below your thoughts of the New York Jets defensive line. Which player are you most excited to see this season for the New York Jets? Who are the X factors? Who are the slept on players? We're going to break it all down in this video. So without further ado, let's dive right into it. So I want to break down the Jets' defensive ends and the edge rushers first and foremost. We got Carl Lawson coming up first at number 58. He is coming off a fresh contract restructure. He frees up a lot of cap space for the New York Jets in 2023. He really did a great job of just putting the team first and really helping out this Jets team financially speaking. Now, Carl Lawson last year had career high in sacks, and no one's talking about it. Coming off an Achilles tear, don't forget what Carl Lawson was bringing to the table heading into his first season with the New York Jets before he did get injured at that joint practice against the Green Bay Packers. We all thought Carl Lawson was going to go out there and absolutely dominate. He was the best player on the Jets defense that season at training camp. He was unblockable. He was the talk of the New York Jets at that time, and then he got injured for the entire season. Last year, not having a full season of, you know, being able to prepare. All he was doing was rehabbing. That's a completely different thing. And he still was he still went out there and had a career high in sacks. And now he's coming out there with a full season of not repairing, not rehabbing, but going crazy, being fully healthy, coming off a fully healthy season, 17 games. And he was nicked up, by the way. We saw Connor Hughes of SNY come out with an article referring that he easily could have took games off, but he was tough, and he went out there and really had a good season for the New York Jets. But I think there's another level to Carl Lawson's game that we all know he is capable of, and I'm really excited to see if he can do that. Now, Carl Lawson is going to be the starter at that defensive end edge rusher, you expect him to be on the field for first down opportunities every single drive uh, to start off in the first quarters. But you know that they're going to be rocking a deep defensive line rotation. Now kicking over to Frank, uh, John Franklin Myers. Now he's going to be on both lists of the defensive ends and the interior defensive linemen because we know that John Franklin Myers is a player that kicks inside and outside. But the Jets love to use him on first down opportunities because when it's run opportunities on first and 10, they like to have the big boys up front. They like John Franklin. Myers out there on the defensive end and then when it's a pass rushing situation they like to kick JFM inside but John Franklin Myers he's one of the he's one of those Jets that I think is a little you know we, we paid him big money a couple years back at the time it felt like a really good contract and last year he had a very solid season and I think a lot of people kind of just look at box score and look at just stats to really determine if a player had a good season or not but you look at the film you look at what John Franklin Myers did last year he was consistently winning his one-on-ones and what he does is he really takes advantage of those one-on-ones because luckily for the New York Jets we have a damn superstar in Quinn and Williams up the middle who takes all the double teams away and really frees up John Franklin Myers so he's another versatile piece for this Jets defensive line. Very underrated, and I'm expecting him to have a similar year of last year. Maybe, hopefully, he'll improve. You never know. Now, Jermaine Johnson, the year two player, I'm really excited about Jermaine Johnson. I think that he has breakout potential written all over him. He was that rookie last year that kind of was not talked about enough because of the studs that we had with Sauce Gardner, Garrett Wilson, and Brees Hall in that rookie class, and that's okay. Jermaine Johnson, he had a big-time game against the Buffalo Bills, had a big sack against Josh Allen, and I think that Jermaine Johnson in year two, you know, not every single rookie, by the way, comes out of the gate and dominates like Sauce or Garrett or Brees Hall when he was healthy. That's very not 
normal. We were lucky to have those players. Sometimes it takes some players a couple years to figure out themselves in the league, and I think we all know that Jermaine Johnson has the utmost potential in the NFL with this New York Jets defensive line. He is a guy that can do power, speed, defend against the run, uh, go against the pass. He could kick inside. He could do so many different things, and I think that this is the season where we see Jermaine Johnson potentially break out, and I'm really hoping that the Jets get him on the field a lot more than they did last year. Now, let's talk about the rookie this season. Will McDonald, the fourth. Now, this is a player that when we drafted him, a lot of Jets fans were scratching their heads. Okay, why are we going edge? But think about it from this perspective, folks. The Jets go edge back-to-back -back seasons in the in the first round in the NFL draft. Jermaine Johnson and then Will McDonald. What did Joe Douglas and Robert Sala say when they both got here? The way you shut down top-tier quarterbacks in this league is getting to them with pass rush. The Jets are prioritizing the defensive line. They're prioritizing pass rush. Will McDonald is a pass rushing specialist. Now, I don't know what he's going to do as a rookie, but I do think he does have six, seven, eight sacks potential as a rookie, the Jets are going to put him on that wide nine, really get him on the outside. He's going to be that speed rusher off the edge, where Jermaine Johnson, he kind of brings that power element. So it's kind of a versatility uh, edge group that the Jets have at the defensive line, where an opposing offensive tackle, they're going to have to watch film of this Jets defensive line, and they got to be prepared. They don't know who's lining up against them, because they're going to see number 52, Jermaine Johnson, and then they're going to have to adjust their game. And then all of a sudden, the next snap, Will McDonald is lining up at a wide nine stance, and they're like, oh my God, I got to get, I got to kick outside because Will McDonald's super fast that can also just absolutely obliterate him with his finesse moves, his speed. Uh, Will McDonald is a freakishly athletic player, and I think that his potential with this team is going to be the closer. I think the Jets are going to not save him, but they're really going to put him in for key pass rushing situations late in the fourth quarter when hopefully the Jets have a, uh, leads. Similar to how they used Bryce Huff last year, you remember that key sack that Bryce Huff had to win the game against the Buffalo Bills on Josh Allen. Actually, the play that Josh Allen injured his elbow, it was a strip sack. The Jets did not recover the fumble, but they lost like 15 yards, and then that next play, Josh Allen threw up a bomb, and Sauce Gardner got the uh, game-winning pass deflection on Gabe Davis to win the game on fourth down, but I think that's where, what they're going to use Will McDonald for, is that pass rush specialist when it's third down, you bring in Will McDonald, go get to the quarterback, and let's go freaking make some plays, baby, and then Bryce Huff, it's going to be Bryce Huff and Will McDonald in that similar role, I see some people talking about potential trade scenarios for Bryce Huff, I don't see why would they do that, I think that the Jets at this point should stay deep at this position because the deeper we are, the better we are The because you know that injuries happen and the Jets got to be prepared for that. Now, uh, Bryce Huff is definitely an underrated player for this Jets team because we did draft Will McDonald and I feel like some Jets fans wanted to see Bryce Huff on the field a lot more last year. The Jets simply used him as a pass rush specialist and nothing else. I think he's better than that, but hey, having two pass rush specialists in Will McDonald and Bryce Huff this season is going to be fun to watch. Now, Michael Clemens. Now, I know that I talked about Jermaine Johnson as a breakout candidate in year number two, but so is Michael Clemens, man. Michael Clemens gives me John Franklin Myers vibes in the, in the perspective that he can line up on the outside, he can line up inside as well on the defensive line, and he just has a presence to him. I mean, we see Will McDonald on the Jets social media team with the mean mugging face. I mean, he is scary. And now he brings a power element. You talk about, you know, Will McDonald as a speed rusher. Well, Michael Clemens is pure power, and that's why this defensive line is so awesome because it's so versatile. You got Michael Clemens on one end, and then you can line up Will McDonald on the other end. You got power and speed coming at you, and you never know what's going to happen in terms of either defending against the run or getting to the quarterback. Michael Clemens is phenomenal against the run, and he can really provide an impact against the pass as well. So I think Michael Clemens has a chance to improve his game, and I think that in year number two, things are going to slow down for him. And as a rookie, he impressed a lot of Jets fans. I mean, not only his personality, not only his presence, but his ability on the field really flashed, and I think the Jets got a steal last year in the fourth round out of Texas A&M and Michael Clemens. And then the final two players are most likely not going to make the roster. I think that these guys of Carl Lawson, JFM, uh, Jermaine Johnson, Will McDonald, Bryce Huff, Michael Clemens, those six guys are most likely making the 53-man roster, uh, and Bradley Anae and Deslin Alexandre. 
they're not going to, in my opinion. Maybe practice squad candidates. Alexandre is an undrafted free agent that the Jets got from Pitt. And Bradley Ine, he's been on the Jets for quite some time. Uh, and now let's kick it over to the interior defensive line now for the New York Jets, the defensive tackles. Now, this is a big group right here, as you can see. Now, there's a lot of names that we're breaking down. Uh, there's a lot of cuts that's going to be happening leading up to the 53-man roster. But you were talk about Quinnen Williams. And again, John Franklin Myers is on this list again because he's versatile. He can do both sides. So let's start it off with Quinn and Williams. Now, the obvious situation with Quinn and Williams, as I'm recording this video, he has not been extended. Does, things don't really seem to be on the same page with the New York Jets and Joe Douglas and Quinn and Williams. Hopefully that does get done by training camp. I still got optimistic views about that. But contract stuff aside, talk about Quinn and Williams as a player real quick. Quinnen Williams is the piece to this defensive line that makes it elite. Without Quinnen Williams, this, this defensive line you can say is good, borderline great, but Quinnen Williams makes the defensive line elite because all those edge rushers that we just broke down of Carl Lawson coming off the edge and Jermaine Johnson, Will McDonald, all those exciting edge rushers, that won't matter, in my opinion, without the presence of Quinnen Williams up the middle because don't get it twisted. Quinnen Williams is the best player on the New York Jets in my opinion, and he led the New York Jets in sacks last year. It is very rare to have a defensive tackle to lead your team in sacks, 12 and a half sacks up the middle. If you can get consistent interior pressure, it absolutely changes the, dy the dynamic of a defense, and that's why this Jets defense was so freaking good last year. Not only is he elite against the uh, quarterback and getting to the pass, but he's also really good against the run, getting those tackles for losses. I mean, he's a damn superstar, first team all pro, pro bowler, deserves to get paid, deserves to be the second highest paid defensive tackle in the league when it's all said and done. Hopefully that does happen, but what more can you say about Quinnen Williams? I really think that whenever his um, whenever he did not play last year, whatever, whether he was on the sideline getting a breather or he was nicked up for a game, I think he missed one game. Man, you can tell that his presence is missed, bro, because he eats up double teams. And that's the thing about defensive line that a lot of people need to realize as well. You can't look at just box score. You got to look at the stats because there's so many th times where Quinnen Williams ate up a double team, which frees up Carl Lawson for a sack, or he frees up another player for a sack. Just his presence and the twists and the stunts that Robert Sala and the defensive line lacks to run is because of Quinnen Williams. And you also got to bring up this with Big Q before we move on to the next player. Remember week three against the Cincinnati Bengals last year, the Jets defense didn't really figure themselves, themselves out yet. The Cincinnati Bengals are beating us, and he challenges the defensive line coach, gets it in his face, White Cotton, and is like, stop blitzing. Absolutely stop blitzing. And at the time, real time, when we saw that, we were like, oh my God, what's going on? Why is Quinnen beefing with the coach? That's not a good look. But then you look back on it and see how it progressed for the rest of the season. Quinnen Williams was right. He wanted the defense to stick to the scheme and trusting the four-man rush, not relying on blitzing. And then from that point on, the Jets defense went to another level. So you got to give Quinnen uh, credit. Not only is he a dominant player on the field, but you can see his leadership. He's not afraid to really stand up against the coaches and say, stop doing this. We got to do it this way. You got to give Quinnen Williams credit for that. Now, moving on to Quinton Jefferson, a player that the Jets got uh, in free agency. We got two Seattle Seahawks here, Quinton Jefferson and Al Woods. He's rocking number 93. Now, he is someone that's going to be replacing Sheldon Rankins as that, you know, pass rushing interior defensive lineman up the middle. Uh, I think that he's going to provide an impact in that rotation, hopefully get consistent pass rush when his name is called. Maybe he can get three, four, five sacks, if that. Uh, I'm really... Not really expecting the best season from him, but I think he's a quality player to add to this defensive line rotation and a, and a defensive tackle room that, by the way, is not as deep as we would like. Uh, but I do think that the addition of Al Woods really completes this because without Al Woods, I'd be really concerned because we've been talking about this entire video about getting to the quarterback, getting to the quarterback. Well, there's another point to the defensive line that's really important that, by the way, the Jets did not do that good at last year, which is defending the run. And I think Al Woods is that piece to defend the run. He is that prototypical big man up the middle that can clog the gaps and make sure that no one can run the ball up the middle on this Jets defensive line. So getting Al Woods is a big time get. Not only is he a great veteran leadership, he's a captain on that defensive line. He is someone that has been in the league for a while. He's 36 years old, but still got a lot of juice left in the tank. His presence on that defensive line is going to be really, really awesome. And then just talking about John Franklin Myers one more time, um, because now we're on the defensive tackle spot. John Franklin Myers, when he kicks inside next to Quinton Williams, that's dangerous. I mean, you're talking about 
picture Will McDonald on one end, JFM, Quinn and Williams, and then Jermaine Johnson or Carl Lawson. I mean, I love when JFM kicks inside a lot, and I think that that's when he's at his best, especially against the pass, because those twists and the stunts that they pull with Quinnen is elite. So I love that we have a versatile weapon of JFM that can do both inside and outside. And then going into the guys at the bottom of the depth chart, you know, Solomon Thomas, he's probably going to make the roster, but hey, you never know because this defensive line is going to have to make some interesting cuts. And then the guys below him, they're definitely not making the roster. Uh, probably practice squad players. Tanzel Smart's been on the team for a little bit. Isaiah Mack, we just picked up. He's not going to make the team. Marquise Spencer as well. He's not going to make the team. But those are guys that are going to be camp bodies and provided, you know, some impactful plays for the Jets in the preseason because you got to get, you know, 90 players on the Jets roster. So that's really the Jets defensive line breakdown, folks. I think that this is a big time position group. They're probably going to roll with 10 defensive linemen on the active roster. If I had to guess what the 10 is, it's probably going to be Carl Lawson, JFM, Jermaine Johnson, Will McDonald, Bryce Huff, Michael Clemens. That's six at the defensive end position. And then seven, Quinton Williams, eight, Quinton Jefferson, nine, Al Woods, 10, Solomon Thomas. So those are the 10 that I'm expecting the New York Jets to go out, to go out there in week number one against the Buffalo Bills. Let me know your thoughts of the Jets defensive line. It's scary. I think this is going to be fun to watch. The best defensive line that we've ever seen on this Jets defense for a very, very long time. Guys, if you stayed all the way until the end of the video, comment down below a Statue of Liberty emoji so I know you were here. And don't forget to hit that thumbs up button if you did not already. I appreciate all the support, guys. And stay tuned for the next video where we break down the next position group. Peace out and let's go Jets.